Today's video is not going to be an easy topic to discuss, but it is something that needs to be talked about. Um, I'm sorry it's not happier. I've always had sympathy for people uh, that have been disowned by their family. Like on my mission, when uh, when I talked to people that said that their parents disowned them when they were baptized into the LDS Church, I thought that was rather unfortunate. And I mean, I had heard of gay people who had been disowned by family when they came out of the closet. In fact, I, I personally know a few. And since I've come out of the closet, I have online chatted with, with several. And I... I don't think it's nearly as common nowadays as it was a couple generations ago, but it still does happen, and it's rather unfortunate. Um, but I've always had sympathy, and the problem is I was never able to have empathy because that, ne that didn't happen to me. My family has not disowned me. Yeah, okay, so they might be sad, they might be feeling grief, they might be feeling lots of emotions, uh, but, but fortunately uh, they, haven't, they haven't disowned me. Um, but I got an email just a couple days ago, and it was about, the, it, it, it happened. I, I didn't, I, I was definitely not expecting anything like this, especially not from this particular individual. I won't get into particulars about who it is. I just want to say that it is, it is someone that I consider to be a brother. It is somebody that I feel the same love for as I feel for my own blood relatives, and I think that made the cut that much deeper. Um, I don't mean to misquote or misrepresent anyone, so I will only read precisely what it says, which is, um, speaking of him and his wife, we simply don't care to participate in your life in any form. And there were, there were other things in the email that were said that were a little bit hurtful, but I don't, that's another topic for another day. Um, and th those are things that people say all the time. I've heard all the time. But this this is something that was a complete shock. And and he said that right afterward. He said, I will know that that will probably come as a complete shock and might be hurtful. And he was right. It was a shock and it was hurtful. And I I never imagined how much that would hurt. I really I really didn't. I, I um, as much sympathy as I had, it was insufficient for people that have been disowned. And this is only one person. This is not my entire family. Uh, you know, I can't imagine how much it would hurt if my parents and siblings and extended family all said things like that to me. It, it would really hurt. I would be devastated. And I, I might even become depressed. I don't know. Uh, I can imagine that it would be very psychologically damaging uh, to go through that much pain. I I know that with this particular individual, the fact that we were so close, and I I never imagined that anything could overpower the, the love that we each had for each other. But it's happened, and I I am entirely aghast. I, I don't know what to say or what to think or how to feel or I just feel hurt. Um, confused. I feel like it's rather unfortunate. But I, at the same time, my, my love for him has not diminished one iota. If he wrote back today and said, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that, or I was just kidding, or, or will you forgive me, you know, if he would have said anything like that, I, I would. I would because I I understand that he can be confused and hurt because, you know, in his mind I've started a life of sin. I've started doing things that are just completely evil and wrong and and horrendous in the sight of God and um I can understand how he would be hurt by that because he always saw me as an upstanding citizen, somebody that feared God and enjoyed doing what was right. Um, well, the thing is, I still do enjoy doing what is right. I still do try to do 
everything I can that is good and avoid doing things that are bad. Anything that I do that's bad, I like to apologize for it and, and repent, as it were. I don't think of repentance in the uh, religious sense anymore, but I do think that it's a, it's a genuine process of how people can become better. And, and I think that we all have room to improve and that we all have room to become better. And uh, I certainly need to do that. Um, but, but I mean, I, I, I love him. And any time, and I do have hope. I do have a serious hope and confidence that one day we'll make amends, that, that, we'll be, that our relationship will be restored to what it was before. And, and possibly even strengthened, you know, after, after the concern has been resolved and after um, we finally understand each other better, uh, I think, I think we'll, we'll have a, a stronger relationship than we did before. And I look forward to that day. And so any time that he's ready for that, I will welcome him back into my life. And... And I will rejoice, rejoice in that day. Just like the, the story in the Bible about the prodigal son who comes home and, and his father doesn't turn him away. He, he throws a party for him and he's very excited to see him. And I, I kind of feel that way. Not that I'm necessarily calling him a prodigal son. Um, I don't know if I'd go that far. But just to say anytime he wants to come back into my life, anytime he wants to be my brother again, I'll be his brother um, because I love him so much. And in my mind, there isn't anything, there isn't anything that can overpower love. Nothing at all. I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't think there's any force on the earth that's stronger than love. And, and that's why I think it's so good to love people. That's why it's so powerful to have a family. That's why I think family is so important because you can learn to love each other and really love each other. Not just to say I love you or to live in the same house, but to to actually learn how to love someone, I think. And, and I think that love can overcome any other any other force. It can overcome hate and um, misunderstanding. It can overcome uh, judgment, prejudice, um, anger. Um, any, anything at all, I think. Um, and not just in the Disney sense of you kiss somebody on the lips and everything's cured. I think in the sense that if you really truly love someone, you will stick with them through all the hard times in their life. And I think that's, you know, that's a good thing that that's in the marriage vow, you know, through thick and thin and richer and poor and whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, I think that that is what love is all about. It's not just being nice to people that are nice to you. Anybody can do that. It's sticking with someone uh, and being loyal to them when you might not understand what they're doing or why they're acting the way they are or why they're saying the things they're saying. Um, I... This is one reason why I don't really unfriend people on Facebook. Um, you know, I've had some people say some things, you know, when I first came out, for example, some people said some things and I think it was just because they were shocked and they didn't have the context, you know, they, they've been taught their whole life that homosexuality is evil. So, you know, in their mind, I've just become evil. And so they say something and, and that's okay, that's fine. I, they can still be my friend. Um, and a lot of them that I didn't unfriend, you know, they're, they're actually good friends with me now. And they talk to me and they're okay. And they have apologized for what they said. And that's fine. And I don't, don't mind at all. Um, and I really hope that that will happen with him. But I did want to say, I just, I want to express my empathy for anyone that has had their family disown them or has had close friends disown them, so to speak. Um, it is very hurtful, it's very painful, and, and I understand that pain now. Um, it's a very real pain, and, and, and 
and I can relate to that. Uh, I hope this helps. I hope that with all the pain you're feeling, with all the hurt that you're feeling, that the, this little bit of empathy here will, will help in, in some small way, maybe to, um, maybe to lighten the sadness, or maybe to just know that there are other people out there that know what you're feeling. And it is, it is a, a feeling of despair, of, of abandonment. Um, and I also want to say that there's, there's hope. There is hope that people will change their mind, that people will soften their hearts, that people will be kind and make amends. Uh, I, I always hold on to hope. I'm, I'm a very hopeful, optimistic person. I hope that uh, that one day this this fellow and I can can be fellows again, <clears throat> and uh, I I'm grateful for all the people in my life that that are there for me and that have supported me through everything. And I've actually been pleasantly surprised with the great number of people that have reached out to me and tried to help. Um, I'm definitely very grateful for them. And I really don't know how to end this video other than just to say um, it really hurts to be disowned, to be told that you should not contact a person ever again. And I won't. I respect his wishes. If that's what he wants, I won't. I won't. I don't pester people. I don't, you know, harass people. If he doesn't want me to talk to him, I won't. But anytime he emails me or talks to me or whatever, I will, I'll, I'll respond. I'll reply and I'll, and then I'll welcome him back, you know. So, um, I just want to say, yeah, that hurts. And I really... I'm, I'm sorry for all of you that have experienced that or that are going through it now or that are afraid to come out of the closet because of this very reason. You think people will disown you or you think they'll never speak to you again. I understand that fear. I understand why that keeps you in the closet and keeps you from being honest about your own feelings. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I wish it wasn't so hard, but the most I can do, and I wish to do it with all my heart, that the most I can do is to, is to empathize and to say, yes, I know what that feels like. Um, and I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.